Good morning. Welcome to Preschool at Woodland. This is quite different than our former parent orientations, but we're quite blessed that we're able to bring it to you virtually this year. I wanna welcome you to the preschool family. I know there's some of you out there that don't know me yet. My name is Peggy Degler and I am the director of the preschool. And my hope and prayer is that we get to know each other well this year. We're really excited that it looks like we will be able to open as scheduled on September the 8th, but please be in prayer about that because things could change at any moment and we have to put the brakes on that and either delay or close. But we are very hopeful that we'll be opening and receiving students on September the 8th. We are ready and we are excited and we are um, all happy about the fact that things have improved in this area and we are happy to have your children back in this church facility. Some things will be a little different this year, and that is okay. We will start out our day by arriving at the door, hopefully a little distance between one another. The doors will be open, which is not new to you. There will be staff at the doors to receive you in. We are contemplating taking temperature checks. We have not landed on that yet. But if we do take temperature checks, they will be for the children, not for the adults. And they're very quick. They take like a second or two. So it won't delay your child getting into their classroom. It is not hurtful to the child. When I am um, at the church volunteering or working as a staff member, I have my temperature checked and it's literally a two second deal. So I don't think it would be alarming to the children at all. It's really important that you think about the health of your child before you bring them to school. So we are going to ask that if your child has been sick or someone in your home has been sick, to please not bring your child to school until they have been fever-free and symptom-free for 48 hours. And that means without the aid of medication. I, that might seem extreme to you, but we've done that during the height of flu season and it has prevented us from having to close classrooms due to the flu or hire additional cleaning services to come in and professionally clean. So we know that's helped us in the past and we'd like for you to help us with that now. I'm just going to tell you quite honestly, everyone's a little fearful of opening and we know that opening doesn't mean we will stay open, but you are our greatest resource. You can help us by keeping children at home if they are sick or there's a family member sick. My staff will be asked to do the same thing. I will have to do the same thing. It is our hope that, that by staying home sick, that we will all stay healthier and that we can keep the preschool doors open. So we're gonna be pretty firm about that. If you bring your child to school sick and we take their temperature and it is above 100, they will be asked to go home. You will get a call right away to come back and pick them up. So help us with that by just keeping them home. You know, preschool is not a requirement. Preschool is a gift for your child. It's a blessing for your child. You're giving them a little head start on being ready for kindergarten. You're giving them a part of their day that they get to have fun with friends their own age. And they don't even know they're learning because they're having so much fun. So just remember, when you send your child to school sick, you're risking us having to shut the doors to the preschool to everyone. And I know you wouldn't want that to happen. Now we realize we are often contagious before we know we are sick. And that's totally understandable. So just be patient with us and understand when we do have to call you to pick a child up. It is for the safety and the comfort of that child and it's for the safety and health of all the teachers and all the students around your child. I know we can all work together and make that happen. Now, the start of our day is going to be a little different for our fours and fives as well. This year, we will offer carpool for the four and five-year-old children. That will include the dolphins, the norwals, the bees, and the toucans classes. So your drop-off will be in carpool unless you have younger siblings that you need to bring in. If you have to park and bring in younger siblings, you are also welcome to bring in your four and five-year-old. Some children really love carpool and will beg you to get back in the car and drive around to carpool, and that is totally okay. 
On the days that the younger siblings don't attend, by all means participate in carpool. Parents usually love carpool. Um, We as a ministry prefer that you come in because we get to know you as a family, and it's harder for us to do that when you're driving through in a car. So we're hopeful that in the spring we'll be able to open the doors back up to all the children and families to come in again. But in the meantime, Carpool will wrap around the back of our building and you'll receive an email with all the instructions regarding carpool. But in case you're wondering at this very moment, you will get in carpool and wrap around the back of our facility. And to my right where I'm standing now is the playground area. And that's where the the carpool will stop to drop out children and to pick up children. There will be a staff member out there to greet each car Your child is to stay in the car until our staff member opens the door. Our staff member will open the door and will close the door. That initial staff member will walk your child up to the sidewalk and release your child to another staff member who is waiting at the door for your child to come in. Your child will come in the opened door and there will be another staff member on top of the landing to make sure your child gets to the right classroom. So please don't worry about your child wandering around the hallways lost. We will make sure that does not happen. Carpool drop-off is 930, just like everyone else. If you happen to get in carpool and there are no cars there, say you arrive at 940 or 945, if there are no other cars there, that means carpool is done and you will need to walk your child into the facility. By that point, the staff member is already involved in other um, responsibilities for the day, so just park and come in. For afternoon, this will be another change for you if you're participating in carpool. Carpool starts at 1.10, not 1 o'clock. Everyone else that's coming in to pick up children will still need to come in at 1 o'clock, but if you're participating in carpool, carpool starts at 1.10. We need this 10 minutes to allow some cars to get out of the parking lot so that our carpool line does not back up to Woodland Church Road. I'm sure you will understand that. So at 110, carpool starts. At 110, you'll see a staff member come out. They'll have walkie-talkies. When you're the first car in line, you will hold up a sign that has your child's last name on it. Our signs actually have first and last names, but we're gonna focus on those names. On the walkie-talkie, we will call your child. A staff member will walk your child out to the staff member that's at your car. Again, we will open and close your car doors. We will get your child in the car. We will not buckle your child in. If your child does not know how to buckle in, we ask that you pull forward. There's plenty of drive out there for you to do that. Have your child buckle in after you pull away. You will exit out the office end, or we refer to it as the cemetery end of our building. So you will come into our parking lot like you always have, the same entrance, but you'll drive around the back towards the playground, and then you will exit out the office or the cemetery end of the building. So we hope that that will keep the traffic flow moving, that it won't back up for our people that need to park and exit out of the big parking lot, and that we won't have people backed up on Woodland Church Road. Carpool normally goes really quick, so don't be concerned about the time that it's going to take to get your child in and out of the facility. Um, That's another reason for making departure by carpool at 110, so that your child doesn't miss anything in their classroom. It will go smoothly. Um, I think we'll take all the precautions that are necessary to keep them safe. We just need you to have looking eyes around you to make sure there aren't children running around that we're unaware of. A lot of preschools and schools do carpool. It's not a new thing. It's just new to us, and it won't take long for us to get um, acclimated and know exactly what we're doing. The goal here is to keep everyone safe. Now, I want to tell you, carpool does start at 110. If you arrive after carpool is finished, that means you're late getting your child picked up. You'll need to park, like I said, but you'll also have to pay the $10 late fee for picking up your child. Um... I've done a really good job at maintaining my budgets year after year to the point that I haven't had to raise tuition for seven years, and no other preschool in this area can say that. So that means I don't have a lot of extra money to pay teachers to stay late. So please be on time for carpool to pick your children up and be prepared to pay the late fee if carpool is finished when you you arrive. 
Um, I want to let you know that we will do everything in our power to make it go quickly and to go safely. And at any time that you have suggestions with that, please feel free to let us know because this is new to us. I have participated in carpool, but I've never led carpool. But I really don't anticipate any problems. So you are going to be given a parent manual. Um, when you come for Meet the Teacher, it'll be similar to this. It may be a different color, but this is what it will look like. Um, it will be in your child's classroom when you come for Meet the Teacher. If you miss Meet the Teacher, it can be available the first day that you come for preschool. We will um, probably this year actually put it on our website as well. We've never done that before, but we know with all the changes with COVID, things are different for everything right now. So I'm just going to tell you there are things in there that probably are not of interest to you, like what type of snacks to send for your child, um, some reading suggestions and things like that. But there is a lot of information in there that you're going to want to know. And I'm just going to quickly touch on some really important ones to make sure you, you know them when school starts. So I'm just going to flip through the book until I get to the things that I really want to mention to you. Everybody always asks, what, what do you do when it snows? And so that is pretty important. A lot of preschools automatically close if Wake County closes. I did that the, my first year 11 years ago, and I'll never do it again because we closed seven days and had snow four days. And the other days we could have come. So I try my best to wait and make a decision when I see what's actually going to happen. Unfortunately, in this area, lots of times that seems to be after dinner or right before bedtime. But I try my best to open and have your child here. I know they want to be here, and I know you want them to be here. My teachers don't get paid if they're not here, so they want to be here too. So what I do, I wait till I see what's going to happen. If Wake County decides to delay their opening by one hour, we're on time as normal because the school buses are far enough ahead of us that they've cleared the roads for us. So if Wake County delays one hour, we start on time as usual. Now, if they delay two hours, which they often do, we may delay our opening half an hour or an hour, depending on what's happening. So we will send messages out to let you know what we are doing, no matter what our decision is. And if the conditions are bad enough to warrant it, we will close. The way we will tell you, communicate with you what we are doing, there's a system called Remind, like Remind You, Remind.com, that a lot of school systems use, and we use it as well. It sends a text to your phone, but you have to sign up if you want to participate. And Miss Hannah will give you directions on how to sign up for that. And you will want to sign up for that. It's the quickest way for me to communicate brief messages to you. So I will send a message on remind.com. If you're on Facebook, you will want to go to pre the, preschool web the preschool Facebook page, excuse me, and sign up Preschool at Woodland. Just click on like. I always post what we're doing there. And then your classroom teacher will send you an email that also tells you what we're doing. So you'll be communicated with three ways, remind.com, the preschool Facebook page, and an email from your classroom teacher. So far, we have not had a parent to show up to close doors. So I feel like this is a good system to use, and I encourage you to take advantage of all three of those avenues so that you'll be well informed of what we're doing. Again, I try my very best to open the doors. When we've had snow, I have to rely on someone to come scrape the parking lot to keep you safe getting into the building. We have a lot of grandparents that drop off children I'm not young myself, and when we fall and break a leg, we don't heal very quickly. So we want to try to keep everyone safe. And so far, we've done a good job at that. So that's in a quick summary what we do when there's snow and ice and we need to close or delay. Another item in your handbook is um, what happens when your child is sick. And Miss Hannah is going to go into more detail than I am, but I have already gone over the fact that we're going to continue our flu season 48 fever free rule. There's more information in your handbook on that. But right now we feel like it's best to do that. So again, your child must be fever free and symptom free for 48 hours. That means the temperature cannot exceed 100 degrees. Um, flipping over in your book, there's some information on lunchtime and things to do for your child's lunch and for food allergies. 
We ask that if your child is in the one-year-old room, which this year is called the fish class, or in the young two-year-old room, which is called the birdies class, that you please cut their lunch up for them and have it in bite sizes. Um, when you have 10 children that one teacher or two teachers have to go around and cut everything up, then um, they get hungry watching their other friends sitting there eating and, and they're a little impatient. They want to eat. So we ask that you please go ahead and cut their grapes up. If they're in the one-year-old room, we ask that you quarter the grapes. Grapes don't dissolve. So if they swallow a whole grape and it doesn't go down, they're going to choke. We're going to have to administer first aid there. So please, please, please cut those grapes up. We ask that you still continue to cut them up in the young twos as well. And even their sandwiches, if you would go ahead and cut cut that up in bite-sized pieces, then they can start to eat a lot quicker. We do get their lunches out for them and open them in those two rooms. Once they get to the older twos class, though, and forward, we may get their lunch boxes out, but we start helping them learn how to get their lunches out and how to open their packages. When they get to kindergarten, no one helps them open their lunches, so we want them to know how to do that when they get to kindergarten. We do have some food allergies. Um, sometimes we have severe food allergies. Our most common allergies right now are gluten and peanuts. So we are a peanut safe environment. That means we do ask our um, children not to bring lunches that contain anything with peanuts, no peanut butter, no peanut nabs or anything like that, no peanut butter crackers. Um, if you haven't tried almond butter, it's a good substitute. It might look a little grainier, but it tastes the closest to peanut butter. There's sunflower butter and a couple of other butters out there you might try. If, if you just get into the habit of telling your child it's a peanut butter sandwich, they'll never know the difference. But there are many other things that you can send other than peanut butter. You know what your child enjoys. And, and I know we have some picky eaters, but try to send something other than just um, cookies and chips. They do need something healthy in their lunch. It's okay to send a cookie, it's okay to send chips, but maybe include some fruit or some cheese or a ham roll if they don't like sandwiches. They may enjoy that. Occasionally we have tree nut al allergies. Usually they're not severe enough that we have to say no one can bring tree nut sandwiches like almond butter. We will let you know if there is someone in your class that has that severe of an allergy. Usually we're able to accommodate tree nut allergies by just making sure no one at their table has an almond butter sandwich or something that contains tree nuts. Um, but we will let you know if there's someone that's that severely allergic in, in your classroom. One thing that we always ask of you is not to send a lovey with your child. And I know the younger the child, the harder that is. Um, sometimes that security blanket or their favorite rabbit or teddy bear has to come to school with them in order to get them to school. And usually we're able to work through that after the first week or two of school just by putting it outside in their cubby and letting them know that it's waiting for them. And sometimes we have to bring it out to soothe them during the day. But I, I am going to ask for you to try really hard to start from day one not bringing the lovey in this year just because of COVID and all of the unknowns with COVID right now. If you do have to bring a, a lovey in, we're going to have to try right away to get it back out into the cubby. You might want to start practicing now going somewhere with the lovey and leaving the lovey in the car seat. You know, go to Target. Does lovey normally go into Target with you? And if he does, just say, we need to leave Lovey out in the car and he's going to wait right here for you. And then that child will be so excited to see Lovey when they get out to the car after going to Target. Try that now. And by the time preschool starts, you might not have to go through the separation issues with their favorite Lovey. Um, everybody laughs at me when I say this, but I call Loveys a germ bag because that's exactly what they are. The kids chew on them. They slobber on them. They sleep with them. Um, so they are full of germs, and it would just be best for Lovey to stay at home if possible, or at least in the car. Same way with toys. Right now, it's really best not to bring any toys from home. We encourage them not to do that anyway because they usually become a problem in the classroom. The kids fight over them, or they lose them, and then they're upset because they lost them. 
But every now and then we have something special in the room, like a show and share day that they're allowed to bring a toy. They get to show that toy and explain that toy, but then they have to put it away so we can make sure that it goes home. Um, so right now we're just asking that nothing like that come from home. It is our hope and our prayer that COVID settles down and shortly after Christmas, they're allowed to bring these special things from home again. Birthdays, we normally invite anyone that wants to come in and celebrate birthdays with children, but this year we're not inviting people into our classrooms. Teachers have been asked to treat their classroom as if it were their home. We're not inviting friends over to eat dinner in our home right now, so we're not going to invite people from the outside to come into our classroom right now. We feel like this is just another avenue of us helping to keep your child healthy. And we know birthdays are special, so we will still encourage you to send a special snack. This year though, for right now, we're asking that it be a store-bought packaged food instead of a homemade food. Um, some of you are wonderful cooks and I personally am going to miss those special cupcakes and those special cookies that you bring in because they usually bring me one too. But um, right now, for everyone's safety, please send something that is store-bought and store-packaged. You can send the little mini cupcakes from the grocery store bakery. Um, we do prefer the mini ones because you know there's a lot of icing on those huge ones and we will sugar them up and send them home. So maybe you'd rather sugar them up with a small cupcake and send them home. Some of the younger classes, parents will send applesauce pouches. The kids love those. Um, they have sent fruit cups before. Most children love those. Some children don't know what they are, but they'll try them. But your safest bet is always a little mini cupcake. Um, just let your teacher know that you're planning to do that because we do have a few children in a classroom that have the same birthday and we'll coordinate that with the other child's parents for their birthday. So we want to be able to celebrate, we just have to do it a little differently this year. And your classroom teacher will give you more communication on what she would prefer in her classroom. Clothing, we ask that you please dress your child comfortably. Right now it is still hot, so please put sunscreen on your child before they leave home so that they don't burn to a crisp during playground time. We do ask that they wear closed-toed shoes and the reason we ask that, our playgrounds have mulch on them and their shoes get full of mulch if they're wearing um, Crocs or flip-flops. So flip-flops, they trip in easily. We just ask please send them in tennis shoes or some type of closed toe shoe. Tennis shoes are the most comfortable for them. They allow them to run and play without being interrupted with a shoe that flew off or that tripped them or they have mulch stuck between their toes. Um, there's more information about that in your um, manual as well. Let's see. The last thing I wanted to mention to you, we always provide you with a list of days that we close or we have something special going on in the preschool that is school-wide. This year, the list is very short because we just don't know what we're going to be able to do um, in the springtime. But for right now, we're not planning any of, any of our normal events like a... Um, Fall Festival, where we normally invite you to come out for half a day of um, inflatables and hot dogs and a pumpkin patch. We just aren't going to be able to do that, but we will still do something fun for your child while they're here. We can still have a pumpkin patch for your child. We just can't invite everyone to the, the campus right now. So please, the list of important dates will be at the very back of your manual. Please take a look at that so that you can put those things on your calendar. The important things are when we close, we close a week to celebrate Thanksgiving because so many people in this area travel for Thanksgiving. It's just best for us to close that week. We close two full weeks at Christmas, again, not only to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but because so many of you have to travel for Christmas. And then we usually close the week that Wake County is closed for their spring break. Why do we choose Wake County when we have people from Granville, Vance, Franklin, and Wake, we have more people that are in the Wake County school system than any other school system. So that's why we follow their schedule for spring break. We hope that by the springtime, we're able to do some of the fun things that we do, and we'll sure communicate all of those things with you. But I wanna make sure you know that we haven't taken all of the fun out of preschool. 
your child is still going to have a lot of fun. They're going to be so excited to see their friends again. It's amazing how excited they get to see someone as old as I am when they see me out and about in Wake Forest. We miss each other. We're a part of each other's life. And if you're new to us, you're going to find that we're going to be your family really quick. We want you to know. You can let us know if you have prayer needs, if there's concerns that um, your family has, that, that you could use someone to pray with you or to help you through. Please know that we're not only your preschool, we are your family. And that's what you, we want you to feel, that we are your family. So I want you to assure you again that we're going to do everything that we can to keep your child safe and to keep them healthy. I'm doing everything that I can to help my staff stay safe and healthy. And I too want to stay safe and healthy. But we've all got to do our part. We've all got to work together. And there are no guarantees. There are still people who get sick that haven't exposed themselves to family. I know people that haven't seen grandchildren since all of this started and, are, are, and they're getting sick. So we just have to do our part and remember there are no guarantees. There, your child is still in for a great preschool year. We're glad that we still have a great number of children that will participate with us. Know that we love you and we are here for you and we can't wait to get the preschool year started with you. I hope and pray that I see all of you at Meet the Teacher, and if not, for our very first day of school, September the 8th. Thank you so much. Hi, Preschool of Woodland families. My name is Hannah Braun. If you haven't met me or don't know me yet, you will be seeing me every day, either at drop-off or pick-up, either at carpool in the back or at the front door when you come in with your children. So I will hopefully get to know all of you and all of your children very quickly. And hopefully you'll get to know a little bit about me. I am um, in my, beginning my sixth year as a Preschool of Woodland Administrative Assistant. I love this job. It is, um, it's great for me because I get to know all the kids in some capacity and then get to know a little bit about your families and get to help in the classrooms at times. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I love it. Um, and I've been part of the preschool family since 2011. Um, when my children began coming and then I was a sub for a year and then I began doing this. So Preschool of Woodland is um, an important part of my life and an important part of my family's life and I hope it becomes the same for you. I'm going to go over two things for our um, parent orientation that we're doing virtually this year. So we hate we're not getting to see you in person but we look forward to seeing you very soon in person. So the two things that I'm going to go over are the remind message system that we have in place that will send texts and also a brief overview of our sick child policy. Um, please read the parent manual that you will receive from Peggy um, in its entirety, um, but especially go over the sick child policy. There will be more detailed information in that. I'm going to just kind of highlight and pinpoint a few things and maybe a few differences than what um, we have done in the past just in relation to COVID this year. So um, first, if you um, are watching this on a computer, go ahead and grab your phone. Um, I'm gonna have a few things for you to um, put in your phone if you're able to. And if not, I'll have some things I can show you, of kind of some screenshots of some of the information. So if you want to take a screenshot while you're watching um, and then put the information in when we're done, you can do it that way too. So whatever is most convenient for you. Um, and once again, if if you don't get it to come through correctly when you're doing it, please don't hesitate to reach out or see us at Meet the Teacher and we'll be happy to help you as best we can. So first, I'm going to go over the Remind system. Um, Peggy uses this as um, a way that she can send a brief text message that kind of does a mass text message to all the families that have signed up for and downloaded the Remind system in their phones. Um, it's a very easy way for her to get a quick message to you. Primarily, it is used for weather-related things, whether we'll be open or closed or a delay or pick up early based on weather-related events. So it's the, it's the first notification you would get if you've signed up to Remind. So it's, you'll get the information quickest that way, and then there's other means that she will also get that information out to you. But the Remind system is a great way to do that. Um, the information that you will need for the Remind system is you'll go to the website www.remind.com backslash join backslash M-R-S-D-E-G-L. 
It might, depending on your phone, your system, how you're signing up, it might prompt you to do a class name. If it does, our class name is Preschool at Woodland, and our class code is the at symbol M-R-S-D-E-G-L. And you should, once that is done, you should begin, um, you'll probably get a message saying you have signed up and things like that. And the only thing you would ever get from us is if Peggy sends a, a brief message. So you won't be getting an influx of a bunch of random messages from us. It will only be in the event of something that's needed right away or in the event of, um, of a weather related event that's taking place. Um, and as you know, in North Carolina, we get lots of weird weather. So do keep your eye on that and we'll be in touch as best we can. So then the next thing I'm going to cover is going to be what will happen if your child becomes ill while they're at preschool. Um, and if we want you to first know that we don't want your child to miss, we hate to see any of our kids not feeling well and we wish they could stay and we wish they could all be here and feel well every day, but we know that that's just not the reality. So please know that we're not going to give you a call unless um, we feel it is an absolute necessity for you to pick up your child um, due to illness. Um, but in light of COVID this year, um, we are really wanting and working very hard to provide a safe place for you and your family and for our staff as well and for all the other children that are in and out of our building um, for preschool. So please know um, that, that that is our priority and that you fall in that priority. Even if you're the one getting the phone call, we, our priority is your child and we want them to feel well. And kids are going to, when they're not feeling well, they want to be home. So um, just please understand that if we do call you, we will need a prompt pickup of your child. Um, and so with that being said, um, you'll be getting a phone call, typically come from myself or from Peggy and from our personal phones if there is a need for your child that they need to go home early. I'm going to have a sign once again so that you can screenshot it if that's necessary of our phone numbers. Please, please, please go ahead and program these, both of these numbers in your phone so that if we do call you, it doesn't show up as a number you don't recognize, because I know I do not um, answer phone numbers that I don't have programmed in my phone because like, you get so many junk calls these days. But please, please, please program both of these phone numbers in there so if you get a call from them, you'll know it's from us and that we need to speak with you. Um, and so Peggy's number is 919 740 Eight six eight three, and my number, Hannah, is nine one nine two eight zero four nine nine five. And don't hesitate if you wanted to sit. Go ahead and send me a text after you program that, and just you know say hi. This you know this is so and so's mom. Just making sure the text came through so that they knew, so that you know you have the right number. That doesn't bother me if that makes you feel better to know that you have it programmed incorrectly and that I have that. Um, that's that's not a problem at all. Um, so with, the, with this year and the way that we're trying to protect and keep everyone as safe and healthy as we very possibly can, um, we know that sickness, not even just the COVID virus, there's sickness around us all the time. So please um, understand and respect that for other families. And if your child's not feeling well, it's probably best just to keep them home. Um, that way you don't get them here and then we end up having to call you anyway and then possibly expose your child um, to other children. So um, we will call in the event that your child has a fever of 100 degrees or higher, or if your child is showing other visible signs of sickness, upset stomach, a constant cough, um, or anything else, we would give you a call on and discuss that with you. Um, so once again, please know we're not just going to call if we hear a slight sniffle or sneeze, but if there's something persistent or something that is worrisome to us, we ask that you respect that and respect our decision that your child would need to go home for that day until they begin feeling better. Um, so the quicker you are able to pick up your phone and respond to us, the better it will be for your child and getting them home where they can begin feeling better. So if you see that we're calling, go ahead and grab that phone call and we'll go ahead and tell you what, um, what's going on and then that way you can be on your way up here as soon as possible. Or send dad if dad's closer or mom if mom's closer, however your family is working out those situations. Um, 
We also are implementing a 48 hour um, fever free and symptom free wellness policy. So if your child has um, continued to have a fever, they need to wait two days after that fever has broken until they can return to school. Same with any other symptoms, a bad cough, um, any, you know, upset stomach issues of that sort. We're asking for a 48 hour fever free and symptom free um, until they can return to school. And fever free means without medication. So you can't give your kid medication that morning and they're not running a fever and then send them to preschool. They need to be without any fever reducing medication for 48 hours, fever free. So um, just please know and respect that out of the safety and health for all of us, your family included. I know you would want and expect other people to do that for you. So we're just really wanting to make sure everybody's just taking care of each other and we're doing the very best that we can. Um, if we do give you a call for your child not feeling well, you will be picking up. It will be a little different for those of you who have been at preschool before. We've had to implement um, kind of a sick child, more of an area where they're separated from um, the other students as much as possible during that time of waiting for mom, dad, grandma to come pick up. That space is gonna be, um, when you come into the Welcome Center, when you look kind of, basically when you'd be looking towards the front of the church out towards the road, there's two big wooden doors that fa end up facing Woodland Church Road. Those two big wooden doors is where you will pull up under that front awning to get your child. Myself or Peggy or one of the teachers will be sitting with your child on one of those couches or chairs right there by that door so that we're kind of out of the way as much as possible from other children and other staff members that are needing to you know come in and out of the areas and then that way it's a quick when you get here you're right there at the door and there you don't have to go very far to come get your child who's not feeling well so we feel like this is the best place that we have to offer for yourself for the child that's not feeling well and for the rest of our students and staff so um, with that being said, that's pretty much all I have to say, but just know that what you do to help us all stay well and your family to stay well is what's going to keep us open as long as we possibly can. And we hope that is from now until the end of May. That is our hope, that is our goal, that is what we long for and desire. So just know that we're hoping and kind of counting on all our families to really kind of get behind us and know that this year will be different, but it's still gonna be a great time. We're gonna have lots of fun. We all love our teachers. You guys will see a lot of familiar faces and we're all very excited to see your kiddos. And um, we just love you and we miss you and we cannot wait to see you in person. And so we hope that you have a good couple weeks until we get to actually be back at preschool. And we love you guys so much. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Peggy. You have my number. So if there's something I could help you with, feel free to text me. Um, that would be just fine. And so I would do my best to answer. And if I can't, I'll find who can't get you the answer. So once again, thank you so much. Take care. We'll see you soon.